Hey guys, welcome to our very first project box. Today we are going to be working on the charcuterie board. These little guys here can be very fun. You can gift them, you can use them as centerpieces around your holiday table, you can use them as candle holders, cheese boards, all kinds of different things. You can go however which way you want to go. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the basics on how to lay your resin down, lay your rocks down, and show you what all is in tackling the charcuterie resin board. Follow along with me and let's get to it. Let's go over everything that's in the box and then we're gonna go over the things that you'll probably wanna get that are not gonna be included in the box. Here's everything you're gonna see that's gonna be included in your box. Of course, you'll have eight measuring cups, your eight popsicle sticks with your glove. I always wear one glove and I leave one hand free of a glove because I don't wanna touch my torch or touch my handle and get everything sticky. So I always leave one hand free, one hand gloved, okay? Next thing, you have your counterculture resin, your part A and your part B. Before you open your resin caps, make sure you mark one of them, whether it's A or B. The last thing you wanna do is mix your caps up and they cure and you're not able to open them. You have your board, of course. And then you have your couture moon dust. This is brand new to the NMO line, and this is a very, very, very powdery, flaky, dusty, silvery pigment. We have our German glass glitter. This is Cristobal. And we have Notorious. This is our powder pigment. In these three black bags over here with our peekaboo window, we have our rock glass, fire ice, gaga. Tipsy is gonna be our chunky mixture from the vault line. And gun smoke, which is our ultra fine mix from the vault line as well. All right, now let's get to what is not included in the box. Say you fall in love with resin art, say you finish your charcuterie board and you want to make another or you want to move on to bigger projects. Um, these are going to be the things that you're going to want to invest in um, that you can keep with you for bigger future projects. I would definitely recommend getting a torch. Okay, <laughs> so you'll definitely want a torch. This is going to be taking away all those micro bubbles, those little tiny bubbles from your resin. And you're definitely going to want a heat gun. Okay. This is going to push your resin around while the torch will blast your bubbles. This will push your resin along with making ripple effects and blending your colors nice and even. Get yourself a spritz bottle with some alcohol in it. Um, I definitely recommend something higher than a 93%. Something less than that is gonna have too much water in it and I wouldn't mix your water with resin. That's never a good deal. Um, get yourself some metallic paint pins. We have some great ones on the NMO website. You want a temperature gun. I'm gonna go into more detail on this and you're gonna see why this is important when it comes to your resin. And good masking tape, okay? This is gonna protect the underside of your charcuterie board whenever you pour, so that way it doesn't seep to the bottom of your board or your art or your surface whenever it's curing and you don't get those drippy marks, okay? And last but not least, grab yourself a nice sharp blade. I recommend getting a sharp X-Acto knife or a sharp box cutter, okay? Let's get to prepping. Prepping your board, you don't have to do it. Um, I would recommend doing it. Otherwise, you might end up with something like this, which is not a total disaster. Um, you can always sand this off right here and then just rub some mineral oil and it's back to normal. But if you wanna save yourself that step, I would definitely recommend dropping down some masking tape right here, okay? And I'm going to probably just go ahead and measure it up that way, because that's as far as my resin's gonna pour. I'm not gonna pour the entire length of the board. That's as far as I'm gonna let the resin come out, okay? Then 
then I'm going to come out this way. Then a little piece this way. All right. Now I'm going to take one of my popsicle sticks and I'm going to burnish the edge and just make sure that I have all of these little edges down real good. And I know you're thinking, what about that little hole? We're gonna deal with that little hole here in a little bit. Okay, turn this over, just so that I don't go through my paper. Take your blade, and you're gonna trace. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. All we're doing is just running the blade along the board. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Hold this down, and there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make a little slit right where the hole is, make an X. And push this in, oops, push it in. Now we're gonna trace the circle. Be very careful when you're doing the circle because it's not a straight edge, so take your time. Don't slice yourself. There you go. Okay, now that we have our board, let's go ahead and prep our resin. So what you need to know is that once you start to mix your part A with your part B, it will start the curing process. So timing is everything. So what I want to do is I want to keep conscious and keep aware of as soon as I mix both parts, the clock is starting. Okay. Now that's not to scare anybody, but we do have to keep in mind that the second I start to combine both and start turning both, I will have to be very careful on how long I take when selecting or mixing or pouring or letting my epoxy sit, okay? Because it will start to heat up. And once it starts to heat up, it starts to get hot. And once it starts to get hot, that's when you know it's starting to activate. We want to make sure that we have enough time to mix our crystal ball and our glass and Notorious and all our glitter. Okay, so here we go. Our first one is being mixed. This is going to be our cup A. And I'm going to put this down as my base. So my first cup will be my base. Now for my second cup. 
And this is the one I want to let thicken up. So I'm going to let this one sit a little bit longer while I'm using my first cup to pour. And this will all make sense as soon as you see. Okay, that's about, I'm going about 12 and a half and 12 and a half. So 12 and a half part A, 12 and a half part B. There we go. Hold on. So this is my second one that I'm going to use as my glitter, crystal ball, and couture, and notorious mixing agent, okay? You wanna mix them real good, because if you don't, you'll get really sticky spots. Um, a good rule of thumb to mix would be about three minutes, okay? That's a good judgment of how long you should be mixing your epoxy. And I got two going here, so I don't want to neglect this one over here. Scrape your sides. So remember, we have our A and we have our B. Our A is going to be our base. We still haven't even decided on the design that we're going to drop down on the board yet. We're going to feel it out while this is picking up. And so, we have our A and we have our B. Grab, our, grab your thermometer and you're gonna point your laser and you're gonna take your temperature and you're at 73 right now, okay? So the best, 72. I would say I like my temperature around mm, 76, between 76 and probably the 80s. I can go anywhere between 76 for cups. If I want to make sure it's not going to run off the edge of my board, I'm looking at the 80s. If I want to make sure it's not going to go anywhere, I'm looking at the 90s. That's not going to run at all, okay? So I think I'm looking good. So let's go ahead and put our, our glove on. You have our A, you have our B still, very separated. We're gonna bring our board down. Now you wanna elevate your board just a little bit and you wanna make sure it's level. So give it a good look, make sure everything is level. And I'm thinking I want my fire ice to kind of go across, kind of like across the board. I know with this one over here, I had it going off the edge. I think with this one, I'm probably going to want to bring it like a belt across and leave some on this side and on this side for it to flow. Okay, some, some room. I want some drama on both sides. Okay, so let's go ahead and break open our Gaga. And I'm going to go ahead and take my A and I want to put a very, very, very mixing it up real good. I'm not going to worry about the bubbles at all, guys, right now. At all. Hit it again. It's 74. Okay. So I'm going to let it sit a little bit. While I'm waiting, I'm going to mix Gunsmoke, Notorious, Tipsy for now. Okay. That's about it. I probably put like about 2.5. You want it to flow. If you put too much of your solid in there, it's gonna gunk it up and you're not gonna have a good flow. So 
we can always add more solid. So let's start off small. A little bit more notorious, there we go. Okay, taking my part B. Now I'm going to scrape the sides one more time. This is nice and flowy. Okay. That's about good right there. That's good. I think the rest can come to my notorious. That's good. A little bit more for tipsy. All right. So there we go. It's got a nice, not too chunky and not too runny. Just perfect. Mix your notorious. There we go. And our gun smoke. Perfect. And I think this is ready. All I'm going to do make one puddle right in the middle. And just so that I don't have any harsh lines, I'm going to just kind of smush it down a little bit. Let's see where it takes me. There, kind of happy with that. Didn't use all that much. We still have a lot. I might go ahead and add a little bit more into my tipsy, just a tiny bit, and then I'm gonna save the rest, okay? Now let's take our Gaga. Now this is, this is glass, so be very careful when you're putting it down. Handle it very gently. You don't wanna cut yourself. In my last board, what I did is I put the Notorious pigment down first and then laid my crystal clear on top, my fire ice on top. And I, this time I wanted to do something that showed the wood through my Gaga. So I didn't do that this time. And you're just basically placing your crystals in spots wherever you think. And all I'm doing right now is just putting my Gaga wherever I see a blank spot. 
wherever I want to build up drama. there and then that's it all right next I'm gonna take my gun smoke and I want to I want to thin it up a bit so I'm gonna add some more of my clear resin and pinch my cup to get a nice defined line and I'm going to move towards me. I'm going to start off the board and move right up against these crystals and off the board. Okay. Same on the other side. Work off the board. Off the board. Now, I will, let's see, let's use some clear. And there is no method here. I am basically just playing with color and using resin as a way to play off of each other. So when I put my next color, it's going to bleed into the clear and the clear into the color. You'll see. I'm going to add some sparkle along my gaga, drizzle just a little bit of my resin on top of my gaga. Take some of your couture, take a pinch. Dust it right over the top. Taking my clear. Tipsy. More clear. Take 
in my gun smoke. All right, now let's heat gun. So now I'm going to take my crystal ball. Right over the top. And I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and just kind of make a design up here with my And then what I like to do is I just like to take my finger and just kind of run it kind of give it permission to smooth out and there you go take the rest of your stuff throw it in a mold I never waste resin <laughs> so if you have a mold laying around or if you have any silicone and you want to make a pour or um, you want to make another board go ahead if you want to pour if you want to do the entire board definitely go ahead and definitely try that um, but this is a good start right here um, what I am gonna do when I'm done here is I'm probably gonna go ahead and take a metallic pen to it right here and make some defined lines um, I you can always add gold foil to it but this is a great start on how to make a pour or how to start your geodes and kind of getting your feet wet um, you know just kind of see how many different creative ways you can play with the materials that are in your box so there you go Want to add some drama to your board? Take your metallic markers, press them out, and add some lines for definition. This adds drama and visual texture. All right, now we come to the part of removing the tape from the back of your board. This is where your heat gun's gonna come in handy once again. Heat up from a good distance. Turn it off and peel away from the board.
before you sand, what I usually do is I'll just come in here, take a fine blade. If you happen to find yourself in this situation, this is all I do right here. I take a little blade and I will slice this resin right off. Before I go in with my sander, you wanna level off the resin. Put some heat to it. Like butter. There you have it guys. I hope you've had some fun. I hope you are flooded with ideas. I hope this has sparked your interest in resin art and you go out and you make some resin boards all on your own. Visit nmoshop.com for more colors and more favorites and must-haves. I'll be seeing you for the next project box. Thanks guys, bye.